Hey everybody, it's Melanie with Lost and Found and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today in this video, I want to talk to you guys about if you should consider selling a line of paint from your antique booth. So this is a topic that I get a lot of questions about, that I've gotten a lot of questions about over the years. I have been retailing paint myself in Lost and Found for six years, we're coming up close to seven now, and have learned a ton about what it looks like to be a retailer or a certified merchant for a specific product line. There was a lot that I didn't know going into it, a lot that I've learned over the years, and I wanna pass along to you guys those things that I've learned, as well as help you think about, could this be a good fit for your booth business? and also to help you think about if it's not a good fit for your booth business. That's what we're gonna dive into today in this video. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna talk about is just a little bit of my story, how I got into selling paint. So I did start my business, Lost and Found, um, Coming up in February of 2022, it will be 10 years old, the 10 year anniversary of Lost and Found. I opened my business with a little booth space that was upstairs in an antique mall. I tell people it was about the size of a jacuzzi bathtub, so it was not a large space. Pretty quickly on, I started painting furniture as soon as I got into a bigger space, which took maybe about 10 months to a year. And that was right about when kind of the chalk paint craze was hitting the US hard. So I was painting furniture with chalk paint and I was one of the few people in my mall that was producing a lot of painted furniture. And I started blogging about the furniture that I was painting and just became associated with painted furniture. Two years later, I came across uh, fusion mineral paint. I was actually online reading some furniture painting tutorials and read a blogger who was talking about fusion mineral paint. On a whim, I sent in an application to carry fusion mineral paint, thinking it would be a week or two before they got back to me. And within 24 hours, I heard back from them and they had said yes. So then I had to kind of backtrack and figure out if I had the money to invest, I had to get permission from my mall and I had to order some to try. So it all happened pretty quickly, a little bit quicker than I was expecting. And within two to three weeks, I had a whole line of paint stocked at my house. From the moment I put it on the floor in my booth, the sales have been fantastic. And it has been probably one of the best things that I did for my business. Now, I'm gonna be 100% honest with you. A lot of it was being at the right place at the right time. That was kind of how it went for me. It was a new paint on the market. Nobody else had it. I already had my blog. And so I just kind of started blogging about it and talking about it. And it just, um, it was kind of serendipity, really. I kind of fell into it. So I don't know that, like I don't want to ever tell people that necessarily my success story with selling Fusion Mineral Paint is going to be everybody's because I just, I, I don't, I can't ever make any sort of promise like that. But I do want to be honest and say that stepping out from just being a booth retailer to then being a booth retailer that was also associated specifically as a representative for a very specific product line was just a fantastic thing for my business in so many different ways, not just with greater income potential, but with establishing my brand, broadening my customer base. So even if you take this step and don't see kind of the immediate sales that I saw, it still can be a fantastic thing for you if you're looking to take that next step. Since I started selling Fusion, um, I have also now sold two other paint lines. For a few years, I was a retailer of Miss Mustard Seeds Milk Paint, and now I'm also a retailer for Jolie Chalk Paint, and I'm a retailer for Redesign with Prima Transfers, which isn't paint, but it's kind of in that same world. So I went from one paint line to at one time, three paint lines and a transfer, now two paint lines, um, and the product lines continue to expand, 
and it's grown to just be a bigger and bigger part of my business the longer that I've been in business. Super grateful for it. I've really enjoyed it. I've had a lot of fun. Um, and I just kind of want to talk a little bit about the process that it could look like for you and some things that you want to think through if you're considering taking this step. Okay, so let's talk for a minute about why selling paint in your antique booth could be a good idea for you, okay? I think that it could be a great fit for you if you qualify with any of these things that I'm about to list off. So number one, and it's gonna seem a little obvious, but if you're painting a lot of furniture in your antique booth, then it could be a great fit for you to become a retailer for the paint that you're using. You are already showing it to customers. You're already displaying it in ways, um, lots of ways for your customers to see and feel and touch in your booth. You already have a lot of content that you're producing with it. And if you were to become a retailer for a paint line that you're using or a new paint line that you find, then you would be able to lower the cost of what you're having to do for your business because you would be able to have all of that paint at wholesale cost. So you would be buying it to then turn around and sell it to other people at a wholesale price. And when you're ready to paint a piece of furniture, you just grab a jar off your shelf. And all of a sudden your profit margin for your furniture that you're producing is a bigger profit margin. So one of the things I've heard from people over the years that are painting a lot of furniture, that they don't want to sell paint because they feel like somehow if they start to sell paint, then people aren't going to buy their furniture anymore. They're just going to buy the paint and do it themselves. And you guys, that's just not true. Those are two different types of customers, okay? You have customers that want the paint and do it themselves. And then you have customers that never, ever, ever want to touch a jar of paint. And they are never going to paint a piece of furniture. And they want the beautiful thing you create. So I really don't see it as, oh no, now I'm going to give away my trade secrets and nobody's going to want my furniture. They're going to do it all themselves. You may have one or two people that do that, but on the whole, that's not going to be the case because your painted furniture and your furniture paint are going to appeal to two different markets of people. So what you really will be doing is broadening your customer base and broadening your appeal to a larger market of people. Okay, so a second thing that you may wanna consider that it could be a good idea for you to become a paint retailer as part of what you're doing in your antique booth is if you are ready to go from hobby to a business. Do you really wanna take this booth thing and turn it into some regular, reliable income for you or for your family? If that's the case, then you really need to start thinking about creating multiple revenue streams. And so what that means is just that you have lots of different ways that you're making money. So you're selling at your booth. Maybe you're doing custom furniture painting for people. Maybe you have um, an Etsy store where you're selling online also. And so adding furniture paint in there is just another one of those revenue streams. So here's why that's smart. It's super rare to have everything in your business going awesome all at once, right? You're going to go through natural ebbs and flows and dips in your sales and in the people that are booking you for your furniture, right? And so the more things that you've got going on, the more consistent your income can be. Because most likely when one thing is down, this over here will be up and it kind of over time it all evens out. That is how I've gotten to where I am with Lost and Found is I have several different revenue streams that are kind of all based upon my booth. I don't just sell at my booth. I sell at my booth and I do several other things. And so when my booth sales are slow, I've got this thing over here that's helping to make up for it. If you're looking to, to get into a more established business, then growing revenue streams is just something you definitely want to consider. And paint may be a good one to add in. Okay, another reason why selling paint could be a good idea is if you're getting flat out too busy to go hunt down your stuff, okay? So one thing about selling anything wholesale, you guys, is that you order it online and it shows up to your door. If you're you know, in a stage of life right now, maybe your kids are getting older and you're running around on the weekends at soccer games and you can't go to all these estate sales anymore and you just don't have the time to keep your booth full, then maybe you should consider selling something that you don't have to go hunt for. It just shows up at your door and that could be paint. 
So I definitely have gone in and out of seasons in the almost 10 years where I've been in business where I've had more time to go hunt and less time to go hunt. So I've been grateful that there's kind of always paint to sell because sometimes I don't have time to find a lot of other stuff, but I can always order paint and it can always be there on the shelf for me. All right, one more reason why it could be a good idea for you to sell some paint in your booth is if there's not anybody in your mall already doing it, okay? So you guys, except for the two years that I had my local studio, um, which I just closed down this past summer, every other year in business when I've had my paint, I've sold it from booth spaces and I'm selling it again from a booth space right now. And it's like there's built-in customers with the other people in your mall, especially if there's people in your mall that are painting furniture. Even if they're not using already, the paint that you decide to sell, most likely they're gonna come try out your paint too. And there's a good chance that they're gonna switch over to what you're selling because it's so convenient. It's there for them at their mall. It's just a built-in customer base. And so if there's nobody that's doing that in your mall yet, then you have a golden opportunity to be the person. Because I guarantee you, if you keep waiting, eventually somebody's gonna start selling some. So why not let it be you? That could be a great thing to consider if you're in a place and there's not anybody selling any paint there yet. Okay, so you may be thinking, heck, this sounds amazing. Melanie, I'm ready to go. Well, I wanna be honest with you guys and also share some of the other things that you need to think about if you're gonna take this step because it is a significant investment it is a big step for your business and it will change a little bit of how your business is going to run. So in this section of the video, I wanna talk a little bit about some things that you need to consider and plan if you want to make this step. Okay, so the first thing is that you need to find a paint that you love and that you will use all the time. The last thing you need to do is just go find a paint just to find a paint. That's a recipe for disaster. So you need to find something that you absolutely love using. If you don't like painting with it, if you don't think it's amazing, you're gonna have a really hard time representing it and selling it to people. Don't just get a paint just because you want a paint. It has to be something that you're super excited about using and that is gonna come across to your customers and gonna help you sell it. All right, another tip for getting started and something else that you need to think through is the investment up front that you're going to have to make. So an investment in a paint line, I've seen anywhere from $800 to like five and $6,000. And even the ones that are $800 at the start to really get to the place where you're representing the line well, usually you're spending several thousands of dollars in those first several months getting the line built up. I never recommend, especially in a booth business like this, I never recommend getting into debt for something like this, going out and taking out a business loan. I just, I, I think that's not what you would wanna do. So start setting aside money now. If you think this is something you may wanna do in your business, then start setting aside some of your profit so you're ready to invest when the time is there. All right, another thing that you need to think about and a tip for getting started is when you're looking at these paint lines, ask to look at their contract terms. So they all have different terms of the contract and you need to make sure that they're comfortable with what they're asking from you and what they're offering you, okay? So some paint lines are going to give you a protected territory, meaning nobody else within a certain mile radius can carry the line. Some of them aren't. Um, some of them have minimum six month order requirements. Every six months you have to order so much. Some of them don't. You need to ask and figure out, do they sell directly to customers? Do they have their own website where they're selling directly to customers and is that their focus? Or are they really focusing on selling to retailers like you and promoting their retailers so that their retailers can be the ones that sell to the customers? Those are all things that you need to ask questions about. Ask a lot of questions. There's no stupid questions, okay? You gotta put on your CEO hat, your big girl hat, and you have to be the boss of your business. Don't get intimidated because you're talking to these other big businesses. Be the boss of your own business and ask those questions. Make sure you know 
what you're getting into. Make sure that you know what they want from you and in return, what they're gonna offer you in return, okay? Do they have photography that you can use? Are they gonna put you on a retailer map? Are they gonna help promote you? What are the things that they're gonna offer you back in exchange for signing on to represent their brand? Okay, another thing that you need to realize about selling paint moving forward is that paint, like any other thing that you purchase wholesale, is gonna have a lower profit margin than your fines. So um, our last video, we talked about pricing, all right? We talked about how to price what you're out digging around and finding at garage sales and flea markets. And usually you're gonna get a really good profit margin on a lot of that, okay? We've talked before about, I highly recommend pricing your fines at least three times above what you paid for them. So if you bought an item for $5, you wanna have it at least at 15, if not even higher. Well, guess what? In the wholesale world, in the paint world, those aren't how the numbers work, okay? Usually you get double the price, right? So whatever you pay for it is usually, you can price it double that amount. Not always, it varies a little bit, and a lot of times you don't completely get to see those numbers until you sign the contract. But in general, that's what you're working with, a 40 to 50% profit margin. And then you have to factor in that you're paying to get it shipped to you. So if you sign on with a paint line that's really far away from you or in another country and you have to import, guess what? That's gonna be another 10, 15, 20% of your profit margin that you're gonna pay in shipping costs just to get it from the warehouse where it's being made to your door. What does that mean? Well, any time in a business that you have a, a thinner profit margin where you're making 30, 40, 45% on your items, that means you gotta sell a lot of it to make it worth your time. If you're thinking about buying into paint, then you need to buy into paint. You don't need to buy into paint just for fun and just to stick some on your shelf. You're not gonna make enough money at it. It's not gonna be worth your time. You have to sell a lot of it in order to get that profit that you wanna see. So if you have an item that costs you $5 and you sell it for 50, you only have to sell three or four of those every month before you've got a nice little chunk of change in your pocket. But if you have an item that costs you $5 and you can only sell it for eight or $9, well, you gotta sell a lot more of that item because you're only making four bucks every time you sell it, right? And so if you sell two or three things that make you $4, you're not putting a lot of money in your pocket at the end of the month, okay? That's how it is with paint and with anything wholesale. You have to move a lot of it in order for it to make a difference in what you're paying yourself. So just know that coming in, understand those numbers a little bit. And like I said, if you're gonna buy into paint, then man, you need to buy into paint and you need to plan on this becoming a major thing that you're gonna promote, that you're going to do demonstrations for, that you're gonna let people know you have, because you're gonna to have to spend a lot of money to get it there, and the profit margins are slimmer, and you're gonna to have to move a lot of it to make up for the work that it is, ordering it, unpacking it, stocking your shelf, and the space it's gonna take up in your booth. Okay, and the last thing, that you need to consider. And the last tip that I have for getting started is that if you start to sell paint, that means you will start to sell less of other things. And there's gonna be some customers that aren't interested in paint. And they may see your booth from afar and see paint and not come look at the rest of what you have. That's just naturally gonna happen. On the flip side, you may have customers that come to you just because you have paint. So you'll probably make some of that up. but. The paint's gonna take up some space in your booth, which means you're gonna have less space for other things. So no, it's gonna change a little bit how you're doing business. Yes, you don't have to go hunt the paint down, but you do have to take the time to manage your inventory, to order it, to unpack it all when it comes, to tag it. You've gotta have a place to store it. You've gotta give it the room in your booth. All of that is gonna mean that your business is gonna run a little bit differently then it's running right now. If you've heard the phrase, every time you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. And that's completely true with if you decide to sell paint. If you say yes to selling paint, 
there's gonna be some things in your business that you're gonna to have to say no to, and you just need to be okay with that going into it, or at least understand that that's normal and that's part of what is going to happen. Once I started selling paint, I became much more known as the paint person than I did the vintage decor person, and that's still the case. No matter how much I talk about vintage decor, most people still know me for paint. That's just how it happened. And if I was like, you know, just had my heart set on being the vintage decor lady, then maybe that wasn't a good idea for me to start selling paint. That's, I, I hope you get where I'm going at. Just understand that that's kind of how this is gonna play out. Think about how that may look for your business. Make sure that you're okay with the brand of your business shifting a little bit, with your presence shifting a little bit, with having less room for fines, less room for furniture, because you're gonna have to give some room to the paint. All right, so I hope that's given you some things to think through. I really do think that selling paint from an antique booth could be a great fit if you kind of fall into any of those things that we shared at the start of this video. But again, there's a lot to think about. So like any other business decision, do your homework, take your time, look at your numbers and ask yourself, what do you really want to do in your business? If you found this video helpful, please do drop us a like. If you've got more questions about this topic, then please ask in the comment section. I'm more than happy to dialogue some more and try to answer as many more questions as I can. And of course, if you're not a Lost and Found subscriber, then what are you doing? Please hit that little button, join our community, subscribe to us. We're having a great time here. I'm loving this community that we're building for antique booth owners and furniture painters. It's an awesome group of people and I want you to join us. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys again soon.